Hi, I'm Mr. Miller, and this is a video on how to make circle graphs. So take a look at the handout we have here, example of making a circle graph. We had previously recorded data about how students get to school, and we had already made a graph, a bar graph, of that data. We had done a single bar graph for the one, two block data. And we also made a triple bar graph for all three of my math blocks. Now, if the purpose of your graph is to compare the categories by numbers, then the bar graph is a good choice. But if you want to compare categories to the whole using percents, then this is when we would make a circle graph. So now we're going to look at how do we make a circle graph. So I'm going to continue using the data from the 1-2 class. And I'll just show you what that data is. Here are the number of people from that 1-2 class who went to school in those different ways. Now, what we need to do is, first of all, add up all of these numbers to get a total number of students in that class. And it was 27. And then we need to go on to the next column and calculate the percentage of students that walk, uh, take the bus, skateboard, bike, get to school by parent motor vehicle or student motor vehicle. So let's start with walking. So 11 out of 27 people walk to school and you need to do that division, 11 divided by 27 and then multiply by 100%. Round this off to the nearest tenth of a percent, so it's 40.7%. And I recommend you do this because if you only get 99% or 100%, all of your sector angles are going to be short by close to four degrees or over by four degrees and that's a significant amount so if we go to the nearest tenth of a percent if we use that percentage to calculate sector angles then we're not going to be too far off in the total number um, for the angle which should be 360 degrees more on that later so uh, this is how you calculate the percentage of students that walk to school so now we don't really need to do a calculation for the number that take the bus, it's just 0%. For the um, percentage of students that skateboard, so there's only one person out of 27. So again, we divide 1 by 27 and then multiply by 100. And this will give us 3.7%. And we know that with 0 students taking a bike, that's 0%. With 13 students going by parent motor vehicle, we would divide 13 by 27, multiply by 100%, we get 48.1%, and the final one, 2 divided by 27 times 100, gives you 7.4%. Now, if this has been done properly, then all of these percentages should add up to 100%. So let's just check that now. So I'm going to add these four numbers, and for me it turns out to be 99.9. Now, don't be concerned about that because when you're doing rounding, chances are you could end up with 99.9% .9 or 100.1, even if you've done the rounding properly. What you should be watching for is if you get something like 98% or 99.5% even, then you should check what you've done in your work here and make sure that you haven't missed anything or if you've got 105% or even 100.5%, you should be asking yourself, ooh, did I round up a few too many times? Should I have rounded down maybe in some cases? And so just look at your calculations again. Now, next thing you want to do is you want to figure out the sector angles for each one of these categories. You're going to be making a little piece of pie that goes into our circle graph and you want to know how big a piece of pie you're going to be putting in for each one of those categories. So in the case of walking, you're going to take that fraction, that 11 out of 27 again, and multiply by 360 degrees, which would give you 147 degrees. Now notice I went and rounded to the nearest whole number for degrees. I didn't go to uh, one decimal place because for me to measure an angle less than one degree it's just not going to be that doable. Now some of you may look at this 11 out of 27 say wait a minute can't I just go 0 0.407 times 360 degrees? Well yes you can that's fine. 
However, you have to realize that this is a rounded number, so you could be a little bit off, and then when you multiply by 360 and round again, now you've rounded twice. So the preferred method would be take the fraction of students that walk and multiply by 360. We don't really need to do a calculation for number of people who take the bus. There's zero, zero people who take the bus, so it's a zero degree angle for that category. In fact, I'm just going to leave it off the circle graph. Skateboard, there's only one person out of 27, so I do one divided by 27, multiply by 360 degrees. The size of the angle for that sector is going to be 13 degrees. Again, zero degrees for the bike. And for the parent motor vehicle, the angle is going to be 173 degrees. And for the student motor vehicle, it's going to be 27 degrees. Now, at this point, if I add up all the angles, they should add up to 360. So I'm going to just do a quick check. I'm going to add all these angles. And they work out to exactly 360 degrees, so I know I'm in good shape here. Oh, and by the way, uh, you may have noticed that there's no grid in here. It's not showing up. I'm not sure why. It's a little bit of a, an issue of lower resolution on my screen for some reason. But don't worry about that. It should look just fine on your paper. In any case, um, the instructions that follow are to make a circle graph from the data above on paper and on Excel. So first I'm going to show you how to make that graph on paper. So here is the circle that you're given and there's a line at the top and at the line at the top you should be writing a title. I'm going to copy the same title that I had written for the bar graph which is how Mr. Miller's 1-2 Maths 8 uh, students get to school. This is at Walnut Grove Secondary School in the school year 2019-2020. And I'm going to make my first mark here drawing a line from the center of the circle to the edge of the circle. Now this line doesn't have to be vertical. You can angle it somewhere else if you want, but I just thought this would be an easy way to start. So the next thing I need to do is I'm going to start by making the walking category and I need to measure the angle there. And it's supposed to be 147 degrees. So first of all, I'm just going to drop into this space my protractor. And I'm going to make sure that this is lined up nicely. Okay, that looks good. Okay, so if you take a look, you'll notice that the zero degrees is here at the top. The center of the protractor is at the center of the circle. And we start measuring this angle of 147 degrees. It goes from zero up to 147 degrees about here. Draw a line going to that point. So just be careful that you, of course, don't put your 147 degrees here because you're going to get a sector angle that's actually um, like 33 degrees instead of the 147 that you want. So make sure you're starting from zero on your initial arm and going up to 147 on your terminal arm. So the next thing I need to do is draw a line for where the next category ends. So I'm going to skip bus because there is nobody in that category, but skateboard, I need to have a 13 degree angle. So bear with me for a second here because I got to rotate this protractor around. So first I'm going to select it and see what I can do about rotating it. Round and around she goes. Where it stops? I hope I know. Okay, right. Oh, that's lovely. Okay, that was fun. Probably like. How accurately can he do this? Now I need a 13 degree angle here. So I'm going to go from 0 up to 13 degrees and I'm just going to make a line that goes up to that point. 
And so that's going to be for the skateboarding category. So the next category is bike, and there's nobody in that category. So I'm going to go straight to parent motor vehicle, which is 173 degree angle for that sector. So before I can do that, I need to take the protractor, select it, and I need to do another rotation. So uh, bear with me again for a moment as I realign things. That's pretty darn good. I'm going to leave it there. Okay, so what you can see here is that I have realigned the protractor so that the zero is on this for the initial arm. And I want to go around to 147 degrees. So I'm going to go up to 147 and I'm going to draw my line. Oh, I'm sorry, not 147. <laughs> I read the wrong number. That was our first angle. It's actually 173 degrees. Okay, so, um, sorry for the confusion. Initial arm at zero going all the way around to 173 degrees and drawing the line there. Okay, good thing I drew that in the right place. All right, so the next thing that I'm going to do here is I'm just going to... Um, take this protractor and select it and just show you that final category that it does um, turn out to the correct angle. So that is the student motor vehicle is supposed to be 27 degrees. So let's just do a check of that. Um, so if I go like this, how does that look? Does it look to you like this final sector is uh, 0, 10, 20? So it looks like it's maybe at 28. So I'm pretty close. If I wanted to be really, really finicky about it, I guess I could get upset, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I'm going to move along and say close enough. Um, and realistically speaking, if I'm looking at your work and you're off by a degree, I am not going to get too bent out of shape, especially if it's only one category that's off by one degree. So try to do the best job you can and it will be just fine. So um, what we want to do now is we want to label each one of these pieces. So we want to put the name of the category and the percentage. So we're going to do that for each one of these. And what you'll notice is that for the one category that is particularly skinny, which is the skateboarding category, there's only one person in that category and it's only 3.7% and the angle is only 13 degrees. And I didn't feel that I could really write skateboard in here and 3.7% very easily. So I just drew a little line to the outside pointing from the outside in that this is the skateboard category and the percentage that goes along with that. Now there's a final thing that you can do here to check if your work is done properly, which is you can check the percentages. This is actually a special circle here it's got tick marks that go all the way around here. And you might be wondering about what is the deal with the tick marks? Of course, we may have talked about it in class. Maybe you were paying attention. Hey, maybe not. I'll remind you right now. Here's what it is. Each one of these tick marks is a percent. So you'll notice it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 percent. And then we've got 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100 percent coming around here. So you can take the percentage for walking, which is 40.7%, and just check that that is in the right place. So 10, 20, 30, 40. Point 0.7 is pretty darn close to 41%. So it looks like that um, piece of the pie is about the correct size. The next category is the skateboard category, and that's 3.7%. So I should be going 1, 2, 3, and 0.7. Yeah, that's actually pretty close. And if I take a look at parent motor vehicle, um, that's 
48%. So, okay, now this is going to be a little bit trickier to count because I've got, okay, so it's one, two, three, and a bit after. Okay, so it's uh, 10, 20, 30, 40. Uh, and from here, I want to go eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that was at a point seven and another point one. So this is pretty darn close to where it's supposed to be. And again, if I check my final category, student motor vehicle, the 7.4%, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 0.4, it's maybe a little bit larger than it should be, but it, again, is pretty darn close. Now, on a test, I will not give you a circle with these tick marks going around. This is just for our formative practice so that we have another way of checking that our circle graph has been done properly on paper. Now the next thing that I'd like to do is I'd like to show you how to make that circle graph in Excel. So let's slide over here and take a look. You notice that I've already put the data into this table and I'm not showing you how to do that because I did that in the previous video. So now I wanna select all of this and I want to insert a circle graph. Now it gives you recommended types of charts that you can use here's one of them it's the circle graph and so I can certainly select that one from here or I can also select it from here and now circle graphs in Excel they call them pie charts and there's lots of different ways that you can do them you can do them uh, like this you can do 3d but let's just go two-dimensional plain ordinary now um, it doesn't look exactly like the one that I had created here. It looks a little bit different, so let's just deal with some of the issues uh, if you'd like to have the same kind of format. So first of all, the title is not exactly what I want, so I can change the title very easily just by double-clicking into that area. So this is how Mr. Miller's one, two, Maths 8 students get to school. And this is it. Walnut. Walnug. Ha! Walnut Grove Secondary School in the school year 2019-2020. All right. So this is maybe needing to be just a little bit bigger in terms of area. So I'm going to try to select this and it really just doesn't want to be selected. How rude. Okay, maybe what I'll do is I'll just select this text and I will go with a font that is a little bit smaller just so it's not taking up quite so much room. Yeah, 13 maybe. Okay, now it's just fitting on the two lines. Of course, I guess I could make this a little bit taller like so and like so and I can make it go a little bit wider as well now we've got a nice big chart to look at okay so now it doesn't have all the elements still that I like to have so I kind of like the category names to be on the inside here and I kind of like the percentages to be on the inside as well so you can either add a chart element individually here um, so the data labels, so you can put them at the center if you want, you can put a legend um, or none. Um, or the other option is you can go to quick layout and you can select what you want here and you see, oh yeah, this has got the category names and the percentages here. So I'm going to go ahead and select that one. That's an easy way for everything to show up the way I want it to. Now you can play around, around with uh, how this looks, uh, you may look at the the zeros in here and say, do I even need to have that showing up? So I think you can delete those individually. So if you don't want to have that, just, just that one, delete that, and now it looks a lot more like what I had. Um, if you don't like the placement of this one in particular, I think maybe you can move it around or maybe not. 
Um, so, but again, it's just a matter of kind of playing around with it. Maybe you look at this and say, I don't like the colors here. I'd like to change the color scheme. And so you're welcome to monkey around with that. And maybe you look at it and say, oh, that's kind of too bright. I think I want to have it a little bit lighter shade. So you can change that around too. I'm not going to play with that right now, as tempted as I might be. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, this is, oh, that's nice. I like that. Oh, yeah. Okay. Anyways, um, so that's it. That's how to make a circle graph both on paper and on Excel. Hope that makes sense. Thanks for watching. Have a good day.